It's time for Delivering Marketing Joy. This time we talk with Katherine Graham from Common Skew and we discuss why she decided to create SkewCon. Hey there and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host Kirby Hossman. And it is my honor to have a repeat guest today, the CEO of Common Skew, Catherine Graham. Catherine, thanks so much for joining me again today. I'm shocked to be invited back, Harry. <laughs> uh, don't be silly. Don't be silly. I've got so many questions for you. So uh, um, why don't I, I, I jump in on the first one? Um, one of the things I, I thought about is... You know, you had one business in the promo space and then went to another business where you're, um, it's a, exactly the same industry, but a totally different kind of business, a totally different space. Tell me some of the lessons you learned there. You know, what's, what's interesting is it actually almost becomes backwards in terms of how it is that we've done it in that we've moved from a services-based business to a product-based business, even though we've gone from being a distributor to a service provider, because as a distributor, you are providing a service. You are working with your supply chain, working with your customers to execute on a service, whereas with Common SKU, we are actually a product. So it's extremely different in terms of, um, obviously, the business model, but also how it is that the company and the business function, how it is that we go to market, how it is that we execute on that. Um, so everything about it is different. So it's been um, a big learning curve in terms of you know the building the team and um, and how it is the company functions. But it's funny that it's that from a, a semantics perspective, it's actually the opposite of what uh, how it comes across. <laughs> wow, wow, that, that that really is interesting. So is is there any like specific thing that you thought was going to be this way, and it's actually you know I thought it was going to be X, but it's actually Y. Is there any, any things like that? Um, I think that, that uh, there's a lot of learnings that you carry across both businesses, regardless of the fact that whether it being a service or a product, um, scale a business that we've absolutely applied to Commons to you. So I think that there's, in any moving from any business to another, there's absolutely learning to take from one to the next. Um, where I think that's, that's been interesting on the Commons key side is that building software is obviously completely different. And... Um, the, the journey around that in terms of the you know, man, building a development team, managing a development team, kind of building those kind of capabilities um, was a whole new um, area for us, even though we'd always had a developer in-house, but being able to scale that team and the process around being able to successfully deploy and do you know, quality assurance and take into consideration customer feedback and how it is that you prioritize um, what you're developing, that's a whole new um aspect from from that perspective is the way that your business is being driven in terms of the customer input um, is entirely different from being a distributor. Awesome. So another thing I know about you guys is within Common SKU, you guys have created an event called SKUCon. Um, it's a user's event and I just love it. It's a truth be told I love the event. Why did you decide to do that and what lessons have you learned from that? I would say a, a big part of the vision around SkiCon was education. So how is it that we can help our customer base kind of grow in their as individuals, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, and how can we provide the kind of content that is going to help them um, in that journey? So that was the original vision behind it was uh, seeing a gap in what was available kind of in the education marketplace for entrepreneurs specifically. It's been a, a absolutely wild ride. It's been so much fun, and I think that part of what uh, what is what we really get out of it, apart from you know being able to feel as if we're helping others, is it's super fun to see our customers face to face. I mean, apart from you know Expo, that a lot of the the only other opportunity that we have you know is those moments. So you know, being in Chicago in the summer, as an example, was uh, super fun to be able to see kind of people partway through the year. Um, so that being able to bring the community together um, in person versus everything always happening virtually I think has been a really great kind of side benefit of it apart from the education piece and we've had you know fantastic speakers such as yourself and others who've been generous to be able to you know share their wisdom I think that that's you know made all of us as a community better yeah well I appreciate you saying that I, I will tell you that it is one of my favorite events of the year you guys really do a great job and uh, Catherine I know is too gracious to do it but if you get the opportunity to go to SKUCon I would highly recommend it it is high quality education. 
And you guys are operating in a technology business and I got to think that's changing all the time. Uh, so how do you stay on top of the innovation? How do you keep up? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I think it has to be part of your DNA if you're going to get into this kind of business because technology is so rapidly moving um, right now. So we follow, you know, a lot of sources online. We're deeply involved in the tech community here in Toronto. Um, we both read a ton in terms of, you know, blogs and, and um, you know, online magazines and things that are, you know, tech crunch, whatever the kind of uh, ways in which we're uncovering what the, what the latest innovations and trends are that are happening, thinking about, even though in some cases they might have absolutely nothing to do with the promotional business how is it that we can learn from what it is that they are doing completely outside of our industry kind of in the technology space and apply that to how it is that we continue to think about um, our business and I think one of the things that's the most interesting in that area is thinking about the the end user experience mm -hmm. how it is that the end user wants to continue to buy and to interact with distributors and you know discovery around product and how it is that their kind of journey um, happens in the digital space and there's a, a huge amount of um, change and innovation happening in that area so that's uh, one spot that we're kind of keenly watching and paying a lot of attention to in terms of what other companies are doing um, outside the industry you know whether it's e-commerce or um, just how it is those digital experiences and transactions are happening and thinking about how it is that we can apply that and where where our industry needs to move from that perspective. Yeah, and I, I'm sure. And again, with all with the users that you have, I assume that, you know. I love that you're taking ideas from outside the industry um, and bringing them in. But do you get feedback from your users as well? Absolutely. The I love the trains going by in the yeah, background sorry. there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to yeah, downtown Coshocton, Ohio. <laughs> Well, you'd probably be hearing like ambulances and fire trucks going on in the background of Toronto here more likely <laughs> than a train. But <laughs> um, the I think that the, our users are an enormous source of, of um, knowledge and, and learning some, from that perspective because of the fact that we deal with such a wide variety of um, companies in terms of how it is that they approach running their business, how it is that they approach interacting with their customers. So we're constantly learning from people that are um, coming on board the platform and how it is that they think. That's cool. Well, you have been more than gracious. You've answered all my questions. Uh, give everybody a chance to ask me one question. Do you have one for me? Yeah. So, you know, this time of year in, in November is often the time where there's a bit of kind of reflection on the year that has passed and you start thinking about the upcoming year. It's often a time for, you know, goal setting and, um, you know, planning ahead. So I'm curious as to, you know, what it is that you are excited about kind of tackling in 2017 that's different or new from what you're doing now. Ooh, that's a good one. Great question, Catherine. And you may know this. I, I'm a I'm a huge goal setter. I believe in the power of goals and visioneering, if you will. And now's a really good time of year to start working on that for sure. Um, I think now, and then honestly through the end of the year, I'm really trying to create the vision of what I want next year to look like. As a matter of fact, right over here on the on my desk, I can tell you that there actually have my goals for the year, so I can see them each and every day. But I think you know we're living through a time in our industry and in many industries where things are changing rapidly. And so I'm trying desperately to look at how we're gonna grow over the next year or two. Are we gonna maintain the same model that we've done historically that we've had some success with? Or do we need to evolve because times are changing so fast? And I'm spending a lot of mental energy trying to do that and trying to make sure that you know that matches up with where we want the company to go. So um, that's what I'm spending my time on. And frankly, I'm really excited about it because I think it presents some new challenges for growth. Yeah, I'm in the middle of reading actually one of the books that you recommended. Oh, yeah. The, um, the one about uh, the four uh, degrees of execution. Yes. And the, the wildly important goal, and that's kind of what's got me thinking about um, how it is that you stay focused and uh, from you know, that execution perspective and really tackling kind of one incredibly important thing. So I'm happy with you the book, and I'll be fascinating to discuss it with you when we see each other next. I would like that very much, and I will tell you that literally it was like we had us all staff meeting today, and we had our wig meeting today. Um, and my team was apprehensive about implementing this, but uh, to almost every person has talked about how it's had an impact. So that's a good one for sure. Awesome. Well, cool. Thank you so much for taking the time, Catherine. I really appreciate it. We will absolutely have to do it again. And uh, <laughs> at the very worst, I'll see you out there in Vegas.
<laughs> Always a pleasure chatting. <laughs> and that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe.